After our first trip in the RV, I wanted to give an overview or a review of the AgriCenter International Campground. Uh, this is a campground that is not uh, very well known in the Memphis area. It doesn't really come up on a ton of searches. Um, it's not one of those necessarily destination campgrounds, uh, but also there's a lot of information on Google out there about campgrounds uh, that is sometimes doctored up. You see the best images that they have stuff like that. So I wanted to give an honest review of this campground. Uh, Memphis is somewhat known as a little bit of a rough area, but there are a lot of destinations uh, or attractions that you might want to see in the Memphis area, but you want to be able to stay in a safe area so that you know your family is safe, your belongings are safe when you're not there, uh, things like that. Now this is a more urban type of campground. You're not out in nature. You are in the middle of a big city. So you do have things like road noise from vehicles driving by, uh, traffic from the local airport, which is one of the busiest airports in the world. Um, so you have that overhead. It's quite a ways overhead, so you don't uh, really get bothered by that tremendously. But I'll give an overview of that. We'll, do, uh, a, we'll show a, a drone flyover of the campground so you can get a good aerial view of what you're seeing. You know, overall, this campground was a pretty good campground to stay at. I wouldn't consider it one of those, uh, again, destination campgrounds to go to but it's definitely something that's a good spot to stay if you're wanting to be a little bit away from all the hustle and bustle of the city but still within the city and close enough that you're able to go to places like uh, Graceland, uh, the Pink Palace, Memphis Zoo, stuff like that. So we'll take a look at what was there. We'll show the drone flyover and some of the attractions that are there. Now we were there in early March so a lot of the things that may be open on a normal basis and uh, may be open uh, when it's not uh, lockdown due to COVID were shut down, such as the farmer's market, um, the gift shop, and the red barn that we'll show you here in just a second. Now here's the check-in station. There are actually two. Uh, they are work campers. This particular one was the one that was open at the time. The person who I had emailed back and forth with making the reservation is the other uh, check-in station or the park attendant. Uh, both of them uh, were easily accessible from the entrance to the park. The lady that checked us in was very nice, very helpful, uh, very informative for things that were going on in the area. So uh, that was an overall great experience. Here in the drone shot, you can see the entrance to the park. This comes in off of Germantown Parkway. You can see both of the check-in areas or both of the work campers that provide check-in for the park. You can also now see a fairly broad layout of the park. It's a very large facility. There are a lot of spaces. This RV park has over 200 sites, according to what we saw. Most of them are full hookup. They have electrical, sewer, and water. The electrical in our site was 50 amp. We had an adapter to go from 50 amp to our 30 amp RV. Most of the spaces are opposing sites, and what I mean by that is the odd-numbered spaces enter from one way, the even numbered spaces enter from the other direction. They're all pull through sites, but that allows you to more easily pull through uh, without having to worry about so much getting your connections up close. You can see that the sites here at this end of the campground were empty. The majority of the sites on this end were full hookup sites as well, and the sites just to the right of them in this image appeared to be more primitive sites or larger sites that didn't have full hookups. And there are also tent sites that are listed there as well. I don't know if these are the tent sites that they're intending or if they're in another location, but I suppose it could be used either way. And again, you can see another row of campsites here with RVs, many of them occupied at this particular point in time. As I mentioned, we were here in somewhat of an off season. You can see that there are a lot of spaces that are filled. These appeared to mostly be longer term campers uh, or people that were there for an extended stay. Here's our site right here in the middle. We have a car parked next to us. That's a friend of ours that's flying the drone and taking the footage. That's the space that was open that had there been someone else there it might have been a little tight. This area that you're seeing right here is actually a corn maze in the fall season. Uh, you can see the remnants of the corn there. They'll let the corn grow out and then they will carve a maze into that obviously once the water has dried up some and have that as an attraction here as well. Now in the distance here just below the horizon you can see some of the buildings. Uh, that is a nursery. 
and you can see some of the water off in the distance a little ways there. That is part of Shelby Farms and Hyde Lake, as well as a few other bodies of water where they allow fishing and various other activities as part of Shelby Farms. This is the AgriCenter building itself. Now this building is somewhat of an events center. Uh, they've held consignment sales, car shows, uh, ag shows, various other activities in this building. It's a very large facility uh, that's set up well to hold events like that. They also have a farmer's market here. Now, as I mentioned, we were here in early March. The farmer's market was not open, but the proximity of the farmer's market to the RV park would make a great stop to get produce and whatever you need to fix dinner. This again is a view of the cornfield that in the fall time frame is turned into a corn maze. One of the benefits of this park of being in the city is the proximity to some of the things that you might need. Here in the distance you can see a Lowe's that's very close by. There is also a barbecue restaurant, a Crystal, uh, which is a drive through fast food restaurant, uh, things like that. There is a Kroger just up the road from this park, as well as several other things, uh, a Walmart and other stores to purchase whatever you may need if you happen to forget something or if you need to make a run to the store. So now you've seen an overview of the AgriCenter International RV Park. As you saw from the video, it's not a destination type of RV park like I mentioned. It's not one of those ones like you're going to see in Colorado, Arizona, where you have just tremendous views and scenery and everything like that. Um, it's very much a purpose-built RV park. Um, is it glamorous? No. Is it functional? Absolutely. It's a park, as I mentioned, where you could come and stay and feel safe with you, yourselves and your belongings. If you wanted to travel in the Memphis area, go see uh, many of the attractions that we have in the Memphis area, which we'll be covering in upcoming videos. Uh, overall, we had a great time. Uh, we did partake in a lot of the activities that you can do in Shelby Farms nearby. We took our dogs to the off-leash dog park. We went and walked around Hyde Lake, which has about a three mile trail around it. Uh, there's also fishing activities, disc golf, things like that that you can do nearby. So overall, a decent RV park to stay at, plenty of activities nearby, and within a 20 to 25 minute drive, you have plenty of activities and sites to see for the Memphis area. So if you're going to be in the Memphis area and you're looking for a place to stay, this is an RV park that should certainly be towards the top of your list for places to stay if you want somewhere safe. And we'll review some other RV parks in the Memphis area to show what else there is available. There is a Jellystone RV park nearby as well as a KOA, so we'll make sure to review those so that you have a better picture of what's available to you if you're traveling through the Memphis area. So thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.